I wanted to start by commenting on today's first reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians. Notice how he begins, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? And basically what he's getting at is that, you know, he says you started with the spirit, but now you are ending with the flesh. And basically what he's referring to is that they believe that they are justified by the works of the law as opposed to faith in Christ. And this kind of goes back to the issue of circumcision also. You know, you do these things and it will mean that, that you have, um, that you are acceptable in the sight, sight of God. So it is true that we need to do certain things, but our salvation is through faith, through faith in Jesus Christ. Does that mean that we shouldn't do things like works of penance and our works of piety? And, and the answer is, of course, we should do those things. And yes, we do need to purify ourselves, to perfect ourselves. But we have to remember that everything is by the grace of God. So we are not justified by works, but rather by faith. And that word justification, I think for the laity, it can be somewhat misleading or easily misunderstood. So when we are justified, it means we receive the grace of God. We receive the grace of God within ourselves. And we receive this grace not because we are deserving of it, not because we have merited it, not because we have done some good to be deserving of reward. It's simply because of our faith in Christ. And yes, we have to do the things that he asks us to do, but it's based on this faith that we are justified, that, that we will receive the grace of God within us. And this is important even for us as Catholics. So it's not just something that, that, that was relevant at the time of St. Paul writing to the Galatians. So recall the Galatians were early Christians and they got this wrong. And many Catholics think the same thing also. Oh, I will only be acceptable to God if I get rid of this sinful inclination and, you know, perfect myself in this way or that way. And yes, we need to do those things, but God accepts you as you are. Yes, if you want to receive more of God's blessings, then do those things. But God accepts you as you are. And in fact, God loves you. You know, St. Paul, in, in one passage, I can't remember where it is exactly, but he says, you know, um, if God acted this way to us while we were yet sinners, how much more will he love us now that we have been justified? So the reality is that God loves us. God loves each and every one of us. Even if you happen to be the greatest sinner in the world, God loves you. Hard to, hard to imagine. But yes, God would still love you. God would still desire your salvation. But all that is required on your part is that you turn to him in faith and do the things that you are supposed to do. Perfect yourself the way that you are to perfect yourself. So we receive the blessings of God because he loves us, not because we deserve it. And even when we do good, well, we still don't deserve anything from God. We can't, we can't force the hand of God. God gives freely. God gives generously. And this is actually reiterated in today's gospel reading. And the, the gospel reading is it's continuing the theme of prayer. So if you recall, we just had the Lord's Prayer. And now our Lord is saying, well, you know, ask and you will receive. Persevere in asking. Don't give up hope. Continue to have trust persevere in asking. And the, the example that he gives, a little parable our, our Lord gives is, you know, you go in the middle of the night to, to your friend's place and ask him for some bread. And he says, well, leave me alone. I'm already in bed. My kids are in bed. And, when, and it, because you keep persisting just to get rid of you, he's eventually going to give you some bread. Just go away. Let me, let, me, let me get back to sleep. And when it comes to God, when we persist, it's not that we're harassing God. It's not that we're making him uncomfortable, but rather he gives because he sees our need. He sees our faith. He sees our persistence. And because he loves us, he wants to give us the things that we need. Now, notice how our Lord kind of emphasizes, you know, if your child asks for a fish, Will a, a good father, a good parent give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? So it is true that sometimes we ask for wrong things, but God always gives 
good things. So a good parent will not give bad things, but rather the good things that we need. And the ideal is that we ask for good things. Sometimes, as St. Paul points out, we ask amiss. In other words, we are not asking for something that is truly good for us, even though we might believe that it is good for us. God knows better than we do what is good for us. I might ask for perfect health, but God may want me to suffer certain afflictions to keep me humble, to remind me that I cannot find happiness in the things of this world. So we don't always see the reasons behind God allowing us to suffer in certain ways or sometimes not granting us the specific thing that we ask for. But he always gives some good. So every time we pray, even if we're asking for, this, for the wrong thing, because we're praying, because we're manifesting trust in God, because we're humbling ourselves before God, God will give us some blessings. God will give us some graces. And, and our Lord reiterates this when he says, If you then who are evil know how to give good things to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Now often, we don't ask for the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit is the sanctifier. So every time we ask God, the Holy Spirit will aid us in especially those things most conducive to our salvation, to our ability to perfect ourselves, to work out our salvation. And, you know, we just had the, the Lord's Prayer yesterday, and, you know, one of, the, one of the, the verses is, give us this day our daily bread. In the Greek, the word for daily, it has a, a number of different meanings. One of those meanings is super substantial, above and beyond what is natural. So give us this day our super substantial bread. Now we might think, well, that could refer to the Eucharist, yes. And interestingly enough, for the Jewish people, the, the expectations of the Messiah was that the Messiah would give uh, kind of like Moses in the desert, he, he um, I mean, it was the miracle of God, but it was through Moses that the manna appeared in the desert, this miraculous bread from heaven. So the belief was that when the Messiah comes, he will, like Moses, give this super substantial bread. And of course, we know that that refers to the Eucharist, but not only the Eucharist, it could refer to other things. So in other words, on a daily basis, we need our daily bread. And that word bread can, can refer to just food or physical nourishment. But you see, the point I'm trying to make is that it also refers to our spiritual needs. On a daily basis, we have spiritual needs. And so when we pray the Our Father, we're really saying, well, give us the spiritual nourishment that we need on this given day. And, you know, if you try to imagine, well, well, how does God nourish us spiritually? And yes, we know the sacraments, we know that prayer nourishes us, but what are the things that God is giving to us? You know, if you, if you think about that, you know, if God loves you on a daily basis, what, what good things does God give you? I mean, a, a, a parent, let's say, what good things does a parent give to their child? Well, yes, they will feed their child, they will clean their child, they will, they will take care of their child. But what does God do for us? And, you know, we can only speculate, but it's many, many things. God strengthens us in our faith. He gives us the grace to, 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 to be diligent, to, to wake up on time, to, to say our prayers on time. You know, it's been pointed out by many spiritual authors that even when a person goes to confession, when they fall into mortal sin, it's the grace of God that's moving that person to go to confession. It's not just their own choice. So God is giving all kinds of spiritual blessings that we are unaware of. Maybe he's giving us inspirations to do the right thing or to, to enlighten us regarding our work or whatever it may be so that we do the things correctly. So many things, and our guardian angels protecting us from certain evils. Many, many things. You know, maybe consolation in prayer also. So God is giving us all these things on a daily basis, and most of the time we are not even aware of it. You know, this, this coming weekend, is, it's Thanksgiving weekend. It's a good, good reminder to us to be grateful to God for the many good things that he has given us. And it's also a good reminder for us that when we pray, 
So often we ask for worldly things. Help me to get a new job or help me with this situation or that situation. But we need to pray for spiritual gifts, especially a greater union with the Holy Spirit to allow the Holy Spirit to work more fully in us. Now notice how our Lord says, you know, um, ask and you will receive or ask and it will be given you. So ask, ask with confidence, ask with faith. Search, and you will find. You know, asking is one thing. Asking is very easy to do. To search implies a lot more. You know, imagine someone who's trying to figure out, okay, who's got the true faith? Well, ask God. Lord, reveal to me. And then search. In other words, use your intellect. Use your resources. Examine. Search the truth, and you will find the truth. And then finally, knock, and the door will be opened for you. Knock on the heart of Christ. You know, knock on the door that leads to God. In other words, seek admission. Be part of the, of the, of the chosen people. Be part of those who have the way of salvation given to them. In other words, join the church. So, um, we need to pray with, with great confidence. Just a, just a brief um, reminder, a brief announcement. Tomorrow is First Friday, and uh, in the evening after the evening Mass, we will have all-night vigil of adoration. And, and uh, tomorrow is also the Feast of Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary. Saturday after the morning Mass, I will be doing a walking pilgrimage. If anybody's interested in joining me, uh, we will be walking to Epiphany of Our Lord Parish, uh, we will pray one decade of the rosary here. We'll pray a couple of decades on the way, socialize a little bit, pray when we get there, and then walk back. It's a half-hour walk each way, so you're welcome to join. So we'll, um, we'll gather at 10 o'clock, and we'll leave uh, for this walking pilgrimage.